Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, your host, and a clinical microbiologist and the chair of the Division of Clinical Microbiology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. For today's episode, we welcome Sean Mitchell from our product management team at Mayo Clinic Laboratories for a test and focus interview. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Pritt. Today, we will be discussing COVID-19, influenza A, B, and respiratory syncytial virus testing at Mayo Clinic Laboratories. But before we get started, Dr. Yao, could you please provide our listeners with a little bit about you and your background? I'm Joseph Yao, the director of the Viral Hepatitis, HIV, and COVID testing lab here at Mayo Clinic and Mayo Clinic Laboratories. Uh, we have been performing COVID testing uh, to help with our patient care and for our Mayo Clinic Laboratories client for the past 20 months. Um, and I've been with Mayo Clinic uh, since 2002. Um, and this actually is my first pandemic experience um, with diagnostic testing. Thank you for sharing your background with us. Can you provide a brief overview and intended use of this testing? Yes, so this is a uh, four viral target test uh, known as uh, SARS-CoV-2, influenza A, influenza B, and respiratory syncytial virus uh, detection by PCR. And so uh, because of the combination of the tests, um, it's uh, somewhat important for users and clients and clinicians to know when to order this test. Uh, this is a PCR-based test that would uh, separately detect SARS-CoV-2, the agent of um, COVID-19, influenza A virus, influenza B virus, and the respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, it detects their RNA, uh, and will report qualitative results of detected, not detected, or negative, uh, and also uh, inconclusive in there's evidence of inhibition uh, in the uh, specimen that prevent us from reliably uh, saying whether it's there or not there. So presence of inhibitors will generate um, inconclusive results. Thank you for that overview of the testing. Now, could you describe which patients should have this testing and when should it be performed? Why don't we take a look at this uh, testing algorithm uh, that you can see on your screen? So I hope you can see the name of this testing algorithm on your screen and you can see my pointer moving. Uh, so this is the COVID-19 influenza and respiratory syncytial virus uh, testing algorithm. So essentially anyone who has symptoms of flu-like illnesses within the past two days or 48 hours, uh, it's important to look at what uh, risk factors that patient has uh, that may suggest possibility of infection with RSV or um, COVID-19 agent or influenza A or B. Uh, if there is uh, flu-like illness, then we looked at whether the individuals has this risk factor for RSV infections. So any immunocompromised conditions such as uh, organ or cell transplantation, uh, evidence or history of hematologic malignancies uh, like leukemia, lymphoma, receiving chemotherapy, uh, infants, very young infants, less than six months of age or history of prematurity are at risk for RSV. Um, children who are less than two years old with chronic lung disease or prematurity or chronic heart disease, and also uh, children with neuromuscular disorders are at risk for RSV. So if they have any of these risk factors, um, then we recommend that the testing for respiratory viral infection should include detection for RSV. So here at Mayo Clinic Laboratories, uh, we offer this test, uh, SARS-CoV-2 plus flu A, flu B, and RSV. Or if your laboratory performs your own 
influenza A, B, and COVID-19 testing, you could order our RSV alone tests, uh, which is indicated here. Now, if individuals who are immunocompromised, um, who may have multiple other pathogens present, then of course, it will be more cost-effective to request the respiratory uh, pathogen panel, or RP is our test code here. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the RP test requires nasal pharyngeal swabs, whereas the uh, four virus combination can be tested uh, with a variety of specimens, such as MP swabs, uh, throat swabs, um, nasal mid-terminate swabs, as well as lower respiratory specimen, such as sputum or BAL uh, specimens if the patient uh, has undergone bronchoalveolar lavage procedure. Are there other options on the market? And if so, what makes our testing different or unique? Uh, as far as I'm aware, there are uh, four plex uh, virus tests available on the market. Um, the two that immediately came to mind um, are the Cepheid uh, Gene Expert Express assay. That's a rapid point of care test that detect the same four viruses as our test. Um, and also the more uh, high throughput laboratory-based test uh, is the Abbott molecular um, SARS-CoV-2 flu A, flu B, RSV uh, emergency use authorization test. So both of these two, one is a point of care, one is a high throughput test on the Abbott molecular Alinity M system are uh, emergency use authorization uh, tests from the FDA. Uh, Unique about our tests is that we actually uh, can offer RSV as a standalone test. As far as I know, I don't believe any of the large reference lab currently offer a standalone uh, RSV only test. So if your laboratory uh, perform uh, SARS-CoV-2 plus flu AB, but don't have an RSV uh, test and it's needed clinically to help determine patients a condition, then you could order the respiratory syncytial virus RNA detection PCR uh, test alone to help guide uh, and make a diagnosis in your patients. I appreciate your explanation of those differences. As we conclude our interview, how are the test results used in patient care? I think it's important for the clinicians to know that in their immunocompromised patients or very young premature um, pediatric patients um, that they uh, may or may not have uh, RSV as a cause of their respiratory symptoms. Uh, because RSV is treatable um, if it's detected early. So there are several uh, management approach, uh, including uh, ribavirin is one of them, uh, but it's rather difficult to use. So one would not want to uh, treat a patient with ribavirin uh, without knowing the diagnosis. So this will help clinch the diagnose and justify um, administration for ribavirin. Uh, and there's also some other uh, treatment um, that is beyond the discussion for today uh, that can be used uh, in other individuals who are immunocompromised. So uh, it just makes sense to have uh, accurate diagnosis to provide uh, precise treatment to minimize um, extra necess unnecessary testing or inaccurate treatment for better patient outcome. Very well stated. Thank you, Dr. Yao, for taking time to update us on this new Mayo Clinic Laboratories test offering. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday.